Hello? Hi. I think I'm live. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. that's terrifying. I'm doing this live from my iPad, which I don't normally ever use my iPad for live, so it's doing a bit of a funky move. Who's with me live? Give me a wee hashtag live in the comments, please, so I know that at least there is somebody out there. There is someone out there. And I am going to get this up on my phone because sometimes I can't see comments at the same time as I'm working right. So I can see that there's six people watching. No comments. So if you are watching, there we go. Alicia, thank you so much. Thank you. Um. So where's the... Oh, there's a camera on this thing. I don't know. There it is there. Right. So tonight we are doing five my five top exercises for a flat stomach. Now I must apologize that this is a very clickbaity title. And I try not to do clickbaity titles. However, in the world of marketing, clickbaity titles work and get attention. So I am going to show you my top five exercises for a flat stomach, but these alone are not going to create a flat tummy, okay? But they are going to help you achieve a, a change of physique, if that's what your goal is. So before we do that, I am going to talk about the scholarship. Applications close in one hour. If your application is not in with me, with your reasons why, in one hour, all bets are off. Game's a bogey. Sorry, cannot cannot move the dates because I want to get next steps out and share with everybody tomorrow what's what's going to happen before the Easter weekend. Alrighty. Um, the next thing, steps, keep coming, keep them coming, keep them coming. We are seeing tremendous step counts. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Right, girls, I can see eight people watching, but I've only got one hashtag live. Come on. Let's have some accountability. Get involved. Get involved. Um, so, yeah, steps are amazing. We've got another 17 days left to the end of the month, 17, 18 days left. So, remember, we've got prizes for most consistent. We've got prizes for most steps in total. And we have got prizes for most steps in a single day. So, there's, and if any, if there's any of these that are, um, there's more than one contender, we'll simply do a prize draw. So it's going to be super good. Can't wait to do it. I haven't got the prizes yet um, because I'm also running a challenge in our client area as well. And I haven't got prizes for that yet. But I know what the prizes are. And I think what I'm going to do is when I know who it was, I'll just order the prizes and send direct to that individual rather than coming to me and then to you. Makes more sense. Right. So let's get back to the clickbait. Let's get back to our, to our flat tummies. Flat tummy exercises. Okay. So I am sharing with you now that you will not get a flat stomach. If you've got, if you don't have a flat stomach just now, you're not going to achieve a flat stomach just by these movements alone. Okay. So for the most of the population, if they do not have a flat stomach, if they're carrying extra wattage around their belly, call it the meno middle, call it the podge, call it the mummy tum, whatever it is, that is an excess of body fat. Okay. Now, as we get older, we store more fat around our middle than when we did when we were younger, okay? So as our hormones change, it changes our fat distribution, which means we get more fat around our middle. So you could be like all through your 30s, 20s, 30s, whatever, and have a really flat stomach and then boom, all of a sudden in your 40s, you start getting this tummy, but nothing really significantly else has changed. That's just weird. That's just fat distribution and that is caused by hormones. But it's still an excess of body fat, and the biggest and easiest way to reduce your body fat is through diet, okay? Not exercise, diet, okay? Your nutrition, when it comes to fat loss, nutrition is going to be the biggest thing that you can get a handle on. So I'm going to do a little bit of a visual demonstration why tum tummy exercises, ab exercises, core exercises are how they work. Well, not how they work, but a little bit of anatomy around your midsection. So I bring to you da, 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 the torso of joy. 
the torso of joy. Now, on these five exercises, I'm going to show you there is no sit-ups, not a single sit-up to be had. Now, that's not to say that sit-ups aren't don't have a place. Sit-ups do have a place, but for the purposes of what we're talking about, that's not the place. All right, so let's talk. This is a tummy. This is a midsection. This is a torso of a human being. OK, I know it says it's a can of cherry tomatoes from Tesco's and it is indeed a can of cherry tomatoes. And do you know what I found in Tesco's? These are a pound thirty, I think I can. And I was in Aldi at the weekend and they were 69 pence a can. Like what the? Who knew? Anyway, right. So our bodies are made up of skin, muscle, fat, water, cartilage, stuff, blood stuff plasma stuff i know we've got sarah on the line sarah's watching she's a nurse sarah what else is your torso your body made up of right but if we are trying to change the shape of our torso there's many things that we have to consider right so our core there's a difference between your abs and there's a difference between abs and core so your abs which are snappily titled rectus abdom abdominis they are they are the label on this so your abs which is your six pack muscles that is bear with one second that is oh it's not gonna work anyway it's a label okay so if you were to just do heaps and heaps and heaps and sit-ups and just work that one area which is the label when you do when you do repetitive work on one muscle group, it gets bigger, doesn't it? So think about bicep curls, your biceps are going to get bigger. Think about uh, booty hip thrusts, your booty is going to get bigger. And it's the same with your abs. So if you just do sit-ups after sit-ups after sit-ups, you're essentially just making this label thicker. The muscles are getting bigger. Now, if you're not reducing the size, if you're not reducing the fat, which fundamentally sits over the top of that, then it actually means that your abs, your tummy is going to get bigger, which we don't want. That's not what anybody wants. So if you've ever been, had to do a sit-up challenge and you've not been dropping body fat at the same time, you will find that your tummy actually does stick out a little bit more. Okay, I am making an absolute disaster of this can, taking this label off. Okay, so that's when we talk about abs, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the layer that sits over the top of your core. Ta-da! Finally, right, okay. So when we take away all that fat that was sitting over the top, and then we take away this layer of muscle, which is your rectus abdominis, we are left with our core, okay? So our core is made up of different bits, and you'll recognise the names of these. So at the top of your core that sits up here, underneath here, is your diaphragm, okay? So that is the top part of your core muscles. Underneath here is your pelvic, your pelvic floor, okay? So the hammock. The thing that gets ruined and makes you pee loads um, when you have children, okay? So your pelvic floor. Now, your front muscles, which are set underneath your erectile abdominis, is your transversal abdominal muscles. So that is your deep core muscle at the front. And then at the back are the back muscles, strong back muscles that essentially connect up to your spine. And they are called erector spiny, I think. I can't remember my anatomy very well. But basically, that's the core areas. Now, when we're talking about creating a flat stomach, when we're talking about work in this area, we're talking about all of these muscles in conjunction. So isolating that label isn't actually going to do you any benefit. Now, the reason why core exercises are so beneficial is if you think about if your core was, like, a lot of people say, oh, I've got really weak core and I've got rubbish core. Like, if you had a really weak core, you would just be like a jellyfish. You would just literally, bloop, you would have nothing holding you up. But our core is basically what keeps us tall, keeps us strong, um, protects all these other muscles. You'll find if you have a very weak core, then you may be more prone to injury elsewhere. You may find posture a challenge. You may get pain in your back. Um, loads of different things, hip mobility challenges, etc., etc. So the exercises that I'm going to show you tonight are 
very much core exercises, but we can do core exercises till we're blue in the face, but if we're not doing them correctly, it doesn't really do that much. So I'm going to take you through some things that we can do to make sure that we're getting that mind, muscle, mind, core connection. Right, before I do that, do I have any questions? That we can oh, do no, to make sure, sure, sure. That we're getting that mind. Right, so we've got Alicia, Sarah, Claire, Claire, Vicky, and Helen. And seven other people are watching me right now who are being very shy and not putting them. I went to go and drink that can of tomatoes there. And I better make sure I remember that that is tomatoes and not peaches because my breakfast is going to be absolutely rank if that, was a, if that wasn't a can of peaches. So, does that all make sense? The kind of how the core is made up and why just doing sit-ups on repeat isn't going to help anyone. And why we need to focus on all of these areas. Just give me a, a yes or an acknowledgement in the, the chat box. Thank, thanks, Vicky. Right. So five different exercises today. It's actually more than that. It's one, two, three, four, eight different exercises. But the first one, there's lots of different variations. So let me put a few down here. So the first one is your everybody's favourite plank. Right, so I'm going to show you different variations. So if you're a total, total beginner and you really have a really genuinely weak core, starting a plank like this is really good as long as you're focusing on connecting this area. And what I mean by that is you're not sagging, you're not sticking your bum up in the air, you're actually feeling this area tighten up, okay? Once you've nailed that, you can progress up to a hand plank or an elbow plank. Now, I have no preference. Like People always say a hand plank's harder. It's not, just some people are built differently and have better shoulder strength, whatever. So it's entirely up to you. But the key thing in any kind of plank is that you're not banana hammocking. Do, 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 do. You're not sticking your ass up in the air. You're actually in a nice straight line from your shoulders all the way down to your ankles via the massive butt cheeks that I have, okay? So that's your plank. Now, with a plank, I'll come down here, with a plank, take it little by little. Don't try and do two minute planks. Look, most people can't hold a two minute plank with any great form. We tend to get a bit saggy in the midsection. So start off at 10 seconds. Once you can do it for 10 seconds, Try and hold it for 15. You know, when we do three sets of 10 seconds, four sets of 20 seconds, whatever, and build it up slowly. And when you've got to a place where, you know, you're effectively holding a good solid plank on your hands or on your elbows for a minute, you can start building in variations. Now, one of my favourite variations is the body saw plank, which you're on your elbows and you're just rocking. Let me see if you can see my feet. Rocking forward and back and you will really really feel that in your core that's one of my favorites you can have what's the other one leg raise one it's a good one just lift one foot slowly and you'll notice that you're wanting to keep your body pushed forward at all times and you can also do hot hands as well so come up into your hands you can add weights into this one and do a single arm you add weights into it, it's called a, a renegade roll. Right. Sorry, I'm just wiggling about here. Let's see what comments we've got. Right, good. So planks are super, super effective. If you find that some people get lower back pain, especially if you have got quite a big tum, gravity takes over, doesn't it? So it kind of sinks. What to do is if you find you're getting a really sore lower back, Take the, take the intensity down, lower the amount of time that you're doing it, but also try squeezing your butt cheeks. That can really help keep the pelvis where the pelvis should be, and that can help alleviate back pain as well. So you want to be focusing on all these muscles, core muscles, butt cheeks, even squeezing your quads and a plank can heighten the intensity as well. And here's Carson. Hi, Carson. You probably don't want to show your butt to everybody um normally you get to see oreo this is carson he was at the vets he lost his meow and it was really sad who's this no not gonna meow anyway right so that's carson 
Oh, he's such a bull. He's, he's my bold boy. Right, so next up, for those of you that have ever been a client of mine, you'll know what these are. So dead bugs. Now, you've, have you ever done Pilates? These feature quite heavily in Pilates. Now, can you see me? So dead bugs can take some coordination, but they don't need to. If you, I am awful at coordination, so if you do struggle, don't panic. So a proper dead bug, you're lifting your legs up, you're at a 90 degree angle in your hips and a 90 degree angle in your knees, hands up, and it's a really slow, controlled move. Opposite leg to arm out. Now, the key bit here, I want you to show you something here. Right, so you don't want to overarch your back like this. This is gonna that's gonna hurt. You don't want to over um flip your pelvis by doing that. You want to find a neutral position. So find your hyper and then somewhere in the middle. And then dead bug flow. If you find that really hard, you can change it to just using the legs or using the arms. But again, you want to focus on this old old lady Pilates instructor said to me once, like, imagine you're pulling your womb up the elevator shaft. <laughs> like, so you're kind of sucking up your vagina all the way up. But that can really help focus on the core muscles. Um, and this this lady that said this, she was in her 80s and she had the tightest core that I've ever seen in my entire life. Absolutely mental. Um, amazing lady teaching Pilates to all these young things. Um, so that's dead bugs. There's the opposite. There's a couple of variations of Superman's as well. I'm going to show you Superman's now. Superman's can often just be the reverse of a dead bug, opposite, and again keeping everything up and tight. But there's another version of Superman which can be quite good, and that is you just lie flat, face first, bring your shoulders up, reach forward, come back down. And again, there's a tendency, everybody wants to go, woo, and rush through it. The slower and more controlled you are in your core movements, the more better benefit you're going to have. Okay? Next up, we're targeting these side muscles. These are called obliques. We're going to do Russian twists. Now, oh, how am I going to do this? How best? How best? Right, a Russian twist. You can either, you're getting a good bird's eye view of my living room tonight, aren't you? Right, so a Russian twist, you can either keep feet on the floor and you're just twisting. But you're not just wiggling, you're twisting. So you want to bring so that you are facing the side. And see again the other side, not just hanging. If you want to add more resistance, you can bring in a wee weight. Maybe something a bit more substantial than a can of beans. And again, to make it harder, you can lift your feet up off the ground and take it slow. Finally, the last biggest bang for your buck that you're going to get with your core exercise is your compound lifts. Now, if you've been around me for a while, you, shall, you, you will have heard me talk about compound moves. So compound moves are muscle... Uh, Exercises normally using weights that use more than one muscle group or multiple joints. So squat, a deadlift, shoulder press, bench press. Um, yeah, they're your core ones. They're your, your main ones. So when you are, especially if you're doing heavier weights, you obviously need your core muscles to keep your technique right to prevent injury, to make sure that you're able to lift the weight. Um, and you'll notice that if you are lifting heavy, but your technique starts crumbling, it tends to be core strength rather than, you know, if it's a squat rather than leg strength. So doing when you're doing your compound moves at your lower weights, at your warm up weights, focus on breath. So breathing in and tightening this all up and you'll feel, you can start feeling when your core is engaged. Some people do find it really quite hard. It took me a long time to figure out core engagement, especially in deadlifting um, because I'm just, I just did so much oomph in my legs and in my lower back and wasn't using my core properly. And for me, using a weight belt actually really helped because it gave me something to 
check against, but only do that under guidance of an experienced lifter or personal trainer, please. I'm not advocating anybody does that. Um, but doing your compound moves and really focusing on really good technique, really good um, engagement of the core while you're doing them is going to be one of the biggest things that you can do to, to benefit your overall core. Right, let me see what's happening in the chat. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Got loads of people watching. Never work with animals, Claire. Oh my God, seriously, don't ever. <laughs> um, They are evil. Right. Love dog bugs. Buy a selfie. I've got, I've got three selfie sticks and about two tripods dotted around this house and it's just pain in the arse. Um, yep, much stronger core just from doing compound lifts. A lot of people, um, maybe not uh, not physique competitors, but a lot of people that have really good lean physiques, they don't actually do anything with ab work or core work. They use it, for, they take it from their compound lifts. And certainly, maybe about 10 years ago, that was the case for me. But now I do need to spend some focused time on core in order to keep that um, flatness. Um, I'm hollow. Cool. Right. Okay. So there's your core. There's your five core exercises that you can use. And every single one of those there, I shared with you, everybody can do no matter what fitness level, strength level. It's all about just adjusting the, the time or the intensity and finding what's right for you. Now, there's a very fine line between being a lazy arse and working out with correct technique, okay? So one thing I'll always say is start low. So start with, you know, more adaptions, start with a low amount of time, but you have to progress. And the only way we get better is by working harder. Not well, working either more intensity or longer. So otherwise you'll just plateau with your, your, your core strength. So when you combine, okay, so to get an actual flat stomach, right, there's loads of things we need to continue con consider. Nutrition, um, avoiding foods that may irritate us. So um, one thing that I have found actually in the past couple of years is as, as we get older, we become more susceptible to bloating, IBS type symptoms, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not here to diagnose anyone. So if you have if you know that there's a food that kind of doesn't agree with you and it can cause bloating or fluffy, and like I'm quite um, puffy from London. Well, it wasn't actually London, it's over the weekend after coming back from London. Um, and so I know that shit food, like, will just make me look a bit oof, oof, rather than tight and toned. Um, so your nutrition, being in a calorie deficit is the one thing that is going to drop body fat, but using these exercises is going to tighten up everything underneath so that when you do shed the body fat, you have this, ooh, all this tight core waiting to get out. Um, so yeah, any questions for me? That went very quick, actually. I do do a core work. In fact, one of the things that I was going to, one of the things that I have actually found very effective for me is uh, ab rollouts. Now, I, I was going to bring it in, but I wanted to do no equipment stuff. Um, but my ab rollout, I've, I've got a little wheel and or I use my barbell with the bumper plates inside. And actually the bump, having the arm position out has really helped engage my core. But you can see, you've totally see my nipples. Jesus, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. We'll just pop that there. Um, okay, so do we have any questions at all, ladies, or are you good to go? What I would suggest you do is don't suddenly go and do all of these five times a week. You're not going to get a lot of benefit, but you can add in like an extra five minutes at the end of a workout and do maybe three lots of planks at 10 seconds each, or you can add like three lots of 10 reps of your Russian twists and just add it in. Um, the one thing that I would say is also if you are doing core work, we want to do it at the end of your your bigger sessions. So you use it as an accessory piece at the end so that you're not weakening your core before going in to do any strength work. Okay. All right. All right, darlings. For those of you that have uh, been 
envious of me this week having the house to myself. No longer be envious because they are all coming back tonight. Husband's coming back, child's coming back, the dog's here. So it's got to be, uh, I've been in bed before 10 o'clock every single night. It's been absolutely bliss, absolute bliss, but back to normal, back to normal. Okay, right. Have a lovely evening, y'all. If you do have any questions on this or anything, put a note in the comments. Um, Helen, I hope you start feeling better soon. And um, have a lovely, lovely night. All right. Speak soon then. Bye-bye.